Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be talking about upgrading and optimizing your legacy systems. Um, now, this is the first webinar in a series that we're going to be covering around legacy systems, migrating, all things that should be considered within there. Um, so this first one is really a high-level overview of looking into so a little bit about the, the details in terms of trends and things that we see with legacy systems, um, some, some stuff about the migration details, a uh, bit into benchmarking your system, uh, understanding how it's currently performing, um, what operational efficiencies can be gained from migrating to a later version, and then a bit about our system monitoring offering that we have, and then we'll open up the lines at the end for a Q&A. So if we start by having a look at some of the legacy system trends that we do see as an organization on a regular basis, we have a few different people in this category. So we have those customers who we would say would sweat the asset, so to speak, meaning that we'll only replace something when it is broken, and they are therefore nearly always running a legacy system. Um, those who planning those upgrades from an OT perspective, um, so they, they do actively look to get current. Um, and then lastly, we have the um, organizations that tend to have a large IT team. So it's normally a larger type customer uh, or organization who force updates down to that um, OT level, down to that plant floor. Particularly here, we're looking from an OS perspective. So it's all about keeping current with the latest security updates. Now, utopia is that we always stay current. Um, and what we see now is that there's currently 700 million devices running Windows 10. Um, this is the latest desktop operating system from Microsoft. Uh, and this was released in 2015. Although having said that, there are still actually 5% of desktop operating systems worldwide running Windows XP. Now, it isn't uncommon for people to say at this point, well, Windows XP is a great operating system. And yes, I understand that. And yes, it was a, a good one for its time, but it's now not even supported from a Microsoft perspective. Um, so it no longer receives any critical updates to protect against um, cybersecurity attacks um, uh, and malicious software. Um, now, upgrading may not be something that is high on the list for you as an organization. Perhaps the reason for this is actually due to not understanding what the impact could be of something critical happening to these machines. It is often not until something goes wrong that it becomes a realization. Um, and when we think about the OT world, it is actually performing quite simple tasks. So it's just expected that it can do this for a much longer period of time um, than you'd expect to see in an IT environment running all these office systems and things. Um, the issue is these simple tasks are actually essential ones. So migrating and updating our system should become part of our standard practice. Another huge issue that we do see with legacy systems is that when something does go wrong, the frequency and length of these occurrences are usually more frequent and also longer as people search to work around the issues they're resolving. Um, so if a piece of hardware fails, for example, as it as it lasts longer, as it takes longer, um, it takes longer to resolve what that problem is because it's harder to find that spare part, or in some cases, you can't even do that and you have to rebuild the system from scratch. Um, if we then move on to talk a bit about, a bit more depth about cybersecurity and malicious software, and what I'm not saying in that previous slide is that um, the systems that are running out there are terrible. Um, they were clearly fit for purpose at the time they were implemented. But as our times are changing, um, and this is particularly true when we look into security attacks in malicious software, it's really important that we, we do get current. Um, and we mentioned in the previous slide, legacy operating systems receive no updates or security patches. Um, and this does make them increasingly vulnerable to ransomware and other cyber attacks. Um, and these attacks, in some cases, may not be deliberate. So as we know, the most common example of um, a infected machine is from a USB stick being plugged into there. It's very easy to, to, to just plug USB sticks into random machines. Um, it isn't malicious. It's just that it's picked up a piece of malicious software along the way. Um, although that being said, 
there has actually now been uh, an increase in the number of security attacks against, specifically against SCADAs and PLCs, um, and this is mainly due to a lack of investment in this area. Um, there's lots of reasons why organizations don't believe they are open to security threats. One of the most common reasons is because they're air gapped. Um, however, we run an awful lot of network audits um, as a service um, that we provide, um, and upon the delivery of those, we've seen in those reports that it's proven that most of them come back um, and there are routes out to the internet. Um, so we're talking about routes out to the internet in these, these organizations that are, are considered being air gapped. A recently released Cisco cybersecurity report revealed that 31% of organizations um, uh, and security um, professionals uh, in those organizations experienced a cyber attack, and by the end of 2019, there will actually be a cyber attack every 14 seconds. Um, they're quite worrying statistics, but there, obviously there's lots that we can do to protect against these. You have to do everything in one go, that's not what we're saying, um, but small inroads um, will put you in the right direction. It will start you off on that, that, that route to um, continued success. Um, so if you look then um, at the reasons why we might upgrade, so we've discussed an awful lot about um, the threats that come from running legacy systems, um, but the, the physical reasons as to why we upgrade and security is clearly high on that list, um, hence the reason why I talked about that quite a bit in the last couple of slides. Um, there's been a lot of content that we've delivered over previous events, previous webinars that goes into a lot more detail on this. Um, but if we look purely at the migration of systems, the key for newer operating systems is to stay current. So what that means is installing Microsoft security updates to keep up to date with those critical updates. If we take our Wonderware software as, as an example, there's a globally hosted website by Wonderware that covers the details of the supported Microsoft updates. Um, there's a link there uh, to that security central website. Um, don't worry about writing it down. We will um, send out a link to, to that um, with, our, with our communications. Um, but this aims to have the Wonderware software supported with the latest updates within 15 business days of their release. Um, but what we have also seen um, uh, over the, the, you know, the past few months or years is that they now also have a cybersecurity updates tab in this same location. Um, and it shows things like vulnerabilities in the actual Wonderware software itself um, that now have hot fixes available for them. So this means that Wonderware are actively working on security updates outside of the standard release cycle to ensure our customers can be more secure uh, and more quickly. Another reason as to um, why we upgrade is for performance improvement. It could be issues for operators on the plant floor, slowness in retrieval of data, so business decisions can be made, or even that the hardware is now seeing regular failures. Performance is often a key driver, particularly if more I.O. is being passed to the system. There are now also lots of different ways we can architect a solution. Um, our team of systems architects offer lots of advice on what is possible within your business depending on your needs. But this can include moving to things like ThinkLine Architecture as an example. This provides more robust solution client side with minimal effort if something were to fail. Um, so there's lots of considerations and we'll, we'll talk more about performance shortly. Um, and then lastly, um, there's obviously feature improvements. As we migrate to later versions, um, we can consider what additional features have been added into that software. Um, so it is a clear way of increasing our throughput to um, improve that bottom line if we're introducing something that is going to make us more efficient. Um, so over the years that the current system has been running, business requirements will change, and we're now seeing an increase in the strive for greater operational efficiency and improved visibility of what our process is doing so it can make better, more informed decisions. This webinar won't cover all of the latest features of our products as we're communicating this over the coming months. There are some webinars out there already that do go into some of that detail. However, if we do look at some of the trends of today, we will see the world move into web-based systems. Um, and we've now seen that come into the forefront of our Wonderware portfolio. This not only appeals to the new generation of worker, but it means information can be seen much further afield. 
It also helps with the way our systems are moving as a whole in the longer term. So what I mean by this is um, it's a way of providing data at our fingertips in context to operators for both our IT and OT systems. And again, we're going to start to discuss that um, over the next few months. Um, what we're going to do now is just take a deeper look into um, performance and how we actually benchmark that. Um, move into that is looking at something like benchmarking. Um, benchmarking is quite an important factor, especially when you're looking at migrating a solution, um, making changes. Um, we should really understand what the current performance is. We do have our own monitoring solution that we use for this. There's obviously lots on the market, but we use something called Exalia. And this looks at lots of different monitors of the infrastructure. It can also provide details of things like what Microsoft updates are running. So where we were talking about earlier on, are we current? This is a good way to provide that through reports. Um, you can get that single view of exactly what machines are running where. Um, uh, and it also links back to our support desk, who are obviously in-house experts. And um, that provides them with more information on your infrastructure. Um, it's just quite key. And the next slide that talks about upgrade scenarios explains this in a bit more detail. Because there's a few different scenarios as to, to how we upgrade. And I've categorized them how I thought made sense. But um, hopefully, the explanations um, will highlight to you exactly uh, what I'm trying to get across here, um, if I haven't named them quite right. Um, but some of the common ways, I suppose, here is one of the first is an uh, existing route. So it's obviously a brownfield site. Um, existing systems, we're looking at, I suppose, upgrading in situ. Um, benchmarking here is a, a key factor, because it will provide the necessary figures to understand how much work the machines are currently doing. Um, if it isn't or the hardware is too old, then we are more likely to be replacing it, and it is useful to do this alongside the current system to minimize that downtime. So it's really key to understand you know, what CPU usage we're using, what memory usage, um, so that we can decide whether we can migrate and upgrade and perhaps use something that is um, uh, software pieces like new operating systems that are more intense, um, or do we actually have to replace that hardware uh, and schedule it alongside. Um, Downtime should obviously be scheduled for those types of things, but how much can we afford to take? Do we know what our downtime costs? Um, here there is a, also a consideration for the Wonderware software we install. So for example, the latest versions of system platform it is now possible to migrate to a later version without having to take the system completely offline, um, you know, minimizing and reducing that downtime for you. Um, so there's lots of factors here, um, but benchmarking is really a, a a key factor to understand your, your current infrastructure. Um, in an existing system, we might also want to look at a expansion. So we might need to add another line. Um, we might want to expand out to a different section of the plank floor, and perhaps even another building. So when we look at something like that, uh, and in particular things like our distributed solutions, again like system platform, all those processing or all that processing runs centrally. So how much more could that handle um, based on that current hardware? So again, that benchmarking uh, comes into play. Um, we should also um, consider what we should do with the additional information that we'll be storing. So yes, by expanding, we're um, going to be storing more data. How are we going to deliver that? What current tools do we have? And are they capable of delivering that information to all the users we want to get it out to? Um, <clears throat> lots of thought here would go into the additional features available. So I mentioned features a little bit on the last slide. Um, again, things like those web-based tools, you make them highly accessible. It makes it open to that, that new age worker, up to the managers and up to that C-level. Um, <clears throat> and in particular, from a Wonderware perspective, um, all these web based tools are coming into that portfolio. Then lastly, we do have sites that are obviously new, our greenfield sites. And with this, really, the possibilities are endless, um, obviously depending on our CapEx budget. Um, but in this scenario, advice is to always go to the latest version where possible. Um, we also find that in multi-site environments, there are sometimes corporate standards, which can be sometimes forced. So this could be in terms of look and feel of the SCADA. 
Um, so if we take that as an example, the beauty of something like a system platform, which we mentioned a couple of times, is that you can always migrate to the latest versions. Um, uh, in fact, you can do that with uh, standalone InTouch and Historian as well um, uh, when you migrate into a new site. So even if a, um, a company standard is to say, right, well, we're running a, a, a version which is three years old, you must use this version um, because this is what we have all the, uh, the software built up in. Uh, it, there's, a, there's an argument there to say, well, and from a Wonderware perspective, they always make sure you can migrate to the latest versions. So in doing so, um, you can take that application that's running at that plant and migrate it to the latest version so you are um, more up-to-date, more secure, and all the things we've talked about. Um, again, when I mentioned our systems architects previously, um, they do a fantastic job in helping you to understand um, and address the concerns that you have when you're implementing a brand new system. Um, and again, they, they help you to think about things that you, you haven't possibly considered. So um, things like uh, the, the different layering across the network, um, uh, what, you, what you should put inside of your demilitarized zone or outside of it. Um, there's lots of considerations that you should always think about there. Um, if we then move on to a bit about compatibility and product lifecycle, um, so uh, I've already mentioned that you can migrate to the latest version um, and the uh, support site that we um, host globally, um, which is hosted by, by Wonderware, includes full compatibility information for each product release. Um, one of the things that we started to see inside of this um, is that they're making cybersecurity compliance updates um, inside the software itself. So um, I know now that they are making sure they have a budget available to always make sure they address some form of cybersecurity and IT compliance. Um, so that budget is set aside to, to ensure they're adhering to that. And it's clear because of the cybersecurity tab we see in Security Central where they're, they're, they're applying things to hot fixes so that you can do it outside of that, that cycle as well. Um, they also do provide full operating system compatibility. Um, this gives us full details uh, where it's all kept up to date inside of here. So if you ever update the um, current, the latest version that they're running on a, on a newer OS, you'll see it all here. Um, uh, but one thing to note here is the product life cycle. So with any product release, um, it works on a mainstream extended and support type life cycle. So mainstream covers the first three years from release. Uh, so this covers you know, technical assistance on issues and inquiries under the current support program, um, all patches and service packs that address product issues and OS security updates, and also any hotfix requests. So if you see some sort of um, product um, issue that you're having a problem with, um, hotfixes can be release, released um, and raised against this, this release, this first three years. The next support cycle is extended. Um, and this is the fourth and fifth year from release, and it covers all the same stuff in the previous, but you don't get that hotfix request inside of there. And then anything behind, behind that is the final stage, and we consider that the mature support phase, which is anything beyond five years. Um, uh, and this phase will still provide technical assistance to the best of our ability um, under that support program. But if there is a product issue when you will be asked to um, upgrade to a later version because uh, the chances are it's either been resolved in that latest release or we have to get current so we can request that hotfix. Um, so it's a, it's a very structured approach um, to ensure you can always migrate, as I've mentioned, so you can, you can get current um, and, uh, you know, we provide support locally in our, in our offices here. Um, so on the same topic of support, I suppose, the whole reason that we, we invest and we purchase and, uh, and stick with support is to reduce that total cost of ownership. Um, so again, I mentioned um, about um, our support teams, our support team in-house, and again, I'm not going to go into great detail in this, um, but our local experts um, do work here in Cheadle in our head office, um, so they're available between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. They have direct lines out into um, our level two um, support, so that's out, out to the states. Um, they have lots and lots of tools available to them, um, including things like remote sessions for faster time resolution, faster issue resolution. 
um, the CapEx investment made for a system to get the system implemented needs to be protected. And this is a great way to do that. We're just cross ensuring we migrate to latest versions, um, but having support as an end user ensures that you always have access to those latest um, version releases, the latest licenses. You just have to request them, and then you can go through that, um, that, that upgrade and that migration process to, to deliver that. Um, I mentioned a little bit about Exeli before for benchmarking. Um, now, it's not all our customers use it for, and I've got some um, use cases of how it's helped our customers in the next next slide, but um, it also provides um, a full monitoring solution 24-7, 365 days of the year. Um, so it provides you with an, an immediate alert, or it could be to the systems integrators to provide them with um, you know, an idea of uh, more insight as to what's actually happening to support their end customer. Um, we also have access to it between our working hours, so it's between 8 and 6, so our in-house experts all ha also have access to that. So that wealth of Wonderware knowledge, um, when you call and ask for, for something that has happened, if you run in the Exalia solution, then they have a greater insight as to, to what might have caused the problem. Um, they have a whole host of detailed reporting um, uh, solutions and reporting um, delivery that it provides you. Uh, lots of recommendations in there as to how you can improve. Um, the Microsoft updates is just, a, just a, a, an obvious one that I mentioned earlier. And if you look at how it has helped our customers, um, so here we see uh, in that top there was a, an increase of 41% in throughput. Uh, so this was actually achieved by the reduction in uh, stoppages on the line. Um, so it, it not only did it just reduce the stoppages, but it also massively reduced the rework, um, which is why it's such a, a big increase and a big um, save in there. Um, it did a, it avoid overwriting critical data, so it monitors things like disk space on the drive, and the Wonderware historian is an example. It'll do a first-in, first-out method, so um, if you start to run out of disk space, it will start to remove the initial one, so you can still store the latest data. Um, so it avoided overwriting this critical data in this scenario. Um, identified uh, a switch as the, the cause of um, a, a screen freezing in the SCADA, so there was some network latency there. Um, it was virtually impossible to find out what was causing that until we, we used that Exalia solution. Um, uh, and then from 42 hours downtime uh, in a previous year to one hour utilizing this, um, uh, and again, uh, this was achieved by continuous monitoring and using it as a preventative maintenance tool. So, yes, we can do that benchmarking up front, but um, preventive maintenance is always is much better than a break-fix model. Um, and then the ability to um, uh, justify the, the ROI for a project based on performance figures. Um, so, again, um, it can be very difficult sometimes to... to um, uh, to really um, justify that return on investment when you're, when you're trying to migrate and get up to the latest version without some real tangible figures, but this is, uh, this is a great way to do that. Um, so we're coming to the end now, so just to, to summarize, we've um, covered lots about legacy system considerations in terms of trends, um, obviously looked into security performance and features uh, in terms of that from a breakdown perspective. Uh, lots of reasons for why we upgrade as a as a community, um, how we actually physically go about doing that, uh, in what types of scenarios, the different ones that are there, and then we talked about our monitoring solution to to help provide continuous improvement. So it is just a, like I say a high level overview at this stage, um, and we will it's the first one in this series that we will start to to do, and um, our marketing team will send out a. Uh, an email following this webinar to, to cover a few details about what, what happened, including a link to the recording so that you can send it out to other people um, and our latest blog as well. Um.